There we go, front and center. All right. Well, good afternoon and welcome. I'm Matt Joyner. I'm delighted, honored that you're all here to take part of this special celebration of our family. Um, before I turn this over to our Master of Ceremonies, um, I do want to acknowledge five people uh, who really have gone above and beyond to help uh, bring us here today and, and to put this on. Um, first, let me say that Davidson College has just been wonderful to us and wonderful to work with. Uh, without exception, every single person who we have had contact with with Davidson has just been wonderful. Um, but I particularly want to call out Stephanie Glazer. Is Stephanie here? Okay. Stephanie is uh, Davidson's Associate Vice President for uh, Campus and Community Relations and was, has been a great help uh, with us. And uh, likewise, Jessica Sneed Olson. Where's Jessica? There she is. Okay. Um, Jessica is Davidson's Director of Special Events, and boy, has she been wonderful to work with. Um, our pianist, Rick Poe. Uh, there are very few friends you can call up and say, hey, would you mind coming and playing in front of 100 people? And, uh, you'll, and have him say, sure. That's a very rare friend, and we have a rare friend in Rick Poe. Um, finally, two special people want to acknowledge. I sort of view them as the alpha and the omega of this event. Um, the first one is Bob Becker. Bob's here in front. Um, turn around, wave. <laughs> Bob, let me tell you a little bit about Bob. Um, this process has taken two years, and when I first walked into Sue Myrick's office not knowing what I was doing, uh, I was told that I need to talk to Bob Becker, staffer for Sue Myrick. Now, I was in the middle of campaign season two years ago, and he didn't even know if he was going to have a job in November. He would have been extremely uh, in order to have told me just to take a hike, uh, that he had other things to deal with, uh, particularly the fact that I was working on behalf of somebody who's not even a constituent of his district. He could have said, you know, people in Raleigh or Durham should really be dealing with that. Uh, but he didn't. Instead, he said, let me see how I can help you. And he did. And he got the process going of getting the military records from the U.S. government that began the whole process of the French Legion of Honor. So he was the alpha of getting this thing going, and we're so delighted that he's here. He's currently the, uh, let's see, district director for Robert Pittenger. Robert Pittenger had the good wisdom to keep him on. So let me put in the plug here. In November, vote for Robert Pittenger. <laughs> because a vote for Robert Pittenger is a vote for Bob. And uh, we need the sort of excellent constituent service that he has given us. We've been so thankful, Bob. Um, and then finally, Laura Meyer Wellman sitting next to Bob, who is the Honorary Consul of France here in Charlotte. She is the omega of this event. Um, and uh, back in May, when I called up and introduced myself, she was so gracious to take my call. And she took a very personal interest in this whole event. And the uh, the highest acclamation I can give to her as a corporate and transactional attorney is to say that she is the one who closed the deal. She got this thing over the goal line. So we're so thankful for her and glad for her to come here today. So without further ado, I will sit down and turn it over to the Master of Ceremonies, Matthew Joyner. Thank you very much. Um, and at this time, I'd ask you to please rise for the presentation of the colors and our national anthem. Yeah. 
Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Matthew Joyner, and I am a first sergeant with the Myers Park High School JROTC Mustang Battalion and a proud grandson of William Joyner, a man I know as DDoc. My brother Oscar, cousin Alec, and I would like to share with you a story of Sergeant Joyner. Once upon a time in Kernersville, North Carolina, there lived a man named Oscar Joyner. He and his wife Lucille had five children, Florence, Oscar Jr., William, Sam, and baby sister Marion. That's William in the Jimmy Cagney suit and pose. <laughs> Across the street from the Joiners lived a young lady named Jane Linville, quite literally the girl next door, but I'll tell you more about her later. In the fall of 1936, 18-year-old Oscar Joyner Jr. entered Davidson College this is his freshman picture from Quips and Cranks, the Davidson student yearbook. At Davidson, Oscar was involved in many activities. Here, he is on the first Davidson soccer team, second from the left on the front row. Third from the right on the front row is his friend and classmate, Sam Spencer, who went on to become president of Davidson from 1968 to 1983. Oscar was also a captain in Davidson Army ROTC program and was commissioned as a lieutenant in the United States Army upon his graduation from Davidson in 1940. Oscar rose in the Army ranks and was one of 15 officers selected to receive SAS commando training in Scotland to return to the U.S. to inaugurate Ranger training. Note the R, Ranger patch, on his sleeve. In the fall of 1942, Oscar's younger brother William entered Davidson College. This is his freshman picture from Quips and Cranks. <laughs> After only one year at Davidson, William was inducted into the Army on September 8, 1943. He was assigned to the 100th Infantry Division, formed at Fort Jackson, and trained at Fort Bragg. On June 6, 1944, while William was still in training at Fort Bragg, Oscar and his 4th Infantry Division landed on Utah Beach. Oscar survived D-Day only to be later killed in the Normandy Hedgeroses, 16 days later. On August 5, 1944, while on leave in Kernersville with his parents, William wrote this letter. Kernersville, North Carolina, August 5th, 1944. Dear Mr. Payne, I just happened to run across your card requesting information on Davidson alumni, and I'm writing this in return. My brother, Captain O.L. Joyner, Jr., class of 1940, was killed in action in Normandy on June 22nd. Details are now lacking, but I am enclosing a clipping from a local paper which may be of some value to you. He was in the 22nd Infantry, a regiment of the 4th Division. I am now stationed at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, in Company G, 399th Infantry of the 100th Division. Have thought of you often since leaving Davidson. I hope things are still running smoothly there under wartime strain and that all of us alumni can have a big homecoming soon. Sincerely, William S. Joyner, PFC. That summer, William, was all, William also wrote a poem for his regimental newsletter at Fort Bragg about those who had gone before, before like Oscar, and those who would follow like William. For freedom's sake, the Norman waves roll in tonight, and ebbing leave their flotsam beached. The bodies there were, now were waterlogged, which yesterday were quick with life, were sacrificed unselfishly for freedom's sake. They walked the path where courage led. They knew that path would end in death. 
or victory most nobly won. And so, without a backward glance, they plunged ashore to wage their war for freedom's sake. Can we who live love freedom less than they who died without a word or hesitate to count the cost when asked by them to do our best? No, we must give, if needs are all, for freedom's sake, William S. Joyner. And though you cannot see it, in the bottom right-hand corner of this page are the initials B.J. Surratt. Betty Jane Surratt was a 19-year-old art major and a close friend of Jane Linville at UNCG when she did this watercolor in 1944. Today, she is my grandmother, Betty Jane Cowan, and we are delighted and honored that she is with us here today. Turn around and wave at everybody, Grandma. <laughs> Private William Joyner was assigned to Company G of the 399th Regiment of the 100th Division, also known as the Sentry Division. The Sentry Division shipped out from New York on October 6th, 1944, and landed in Marseille on October 20th, 1944. Here's Private Joyner on the front row, far right, at, of the headquarters company's group picture in France. Private Joyner did not win World War II single-handedly. He had the help of at least three good friends. From left to right, we have Howard Hall from Oregon, Bob Frazier from Michigan, and Private Joyner. On his left is Richard Welke from New York. We are honored and delighted that Richard Welke is sitting on William Joyner's left again today. The 100th Division pushed the Germans up the Rhone Valley into Alsace and was the first division of American troops to relieve the troops who had been fighting since D-Day. On November 26, 1944, Private Joyner wrote, this, wrote his mother Lucille the following letter from Alsace. Somewhere in Alsace. November 26, 1944. Dear Mom, Yesterday, we liberated an Alsatian town, so we spent last night under a roof with a good fire for the second time since we came to France. This town had been occupied by the Germans for nearly four years. The people were overjoyed to see us and haven't been able to do enough for us. I was billeted with a family of five. Last night, they brought out their best cognac, made coffee, and gave us apples. Of course, we gave them cigarettes, chocolate, and what extra rations we had, but they are not too bad off. Today, they spent the day digging out their hidden belongings, skis, silverware, etc., and from almost every home hung a tricolor French flag for the first time in four years. I guess this sounds as if we are looting or something, but that is not it. These people are so glad to see us they can't do enough. Don't worry, I'll never take anything from these people that I think they need. I give them everything I can scrape up. I am well and happy. Love to all, William. On December 12th, 1944, Sergeant Joyner wrote his mother Lucille another letter from his winter foxhole. Somewhere in France, December 12th, 1944. Dear mom, I suppose you're somewhat surprised to find out that I am a sergeant now. I guess I'm not the type of one usually thinks of as an infantry sergeant, but it takes all kinds. <laughs> I'm a communications sergeant of the company. My job in the main is to establish and maintain communications of all kinds, radio, telephone, and messenger, primarily within the company and between company and battalion also. I have the map work of the company to look out after, sketches, overlay, etc. It keeps me busy, all right, but it, get, but it is interesting work and I'd rather stay busy. On 
Living the life of an infantry infantryman inst instills in one the amazing sense of values. Most people get the impression that it is a toughening experience, and I suppose it is. But I have found it is mainly a humbling experience. One learns to appreciate the simplest things, things usually taken for granted. And facing danger constantly, he realizes as never before that certainly, quote, it is God's mercy that we are not consumed, end quote. The only worry I have, the only worry I have ever is that you are worrying about me. I have learned to take things as they come daily and hope that you will do likewise. And not being anxious about me, I am I am in good health and excellent in excellent spirits and thinking of you all, your son William. It was during this winter in Alsace that Sergeant Joyner was awarded the Bronze Star. This is a composite letter from February and March 1945. Citation. Sorry. Don't know if we can read here. You might have to read it directly off the screen then. <laughs> That's what it's there for. Is it on here? No, I think I'm going to have to read it off the screen. Yeah. All right. Do it this way. William S. Joyner, Sergeant. 399th Infantry Regiment for heroic and <laughs> this can be difficult. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> the, the Omega of the event again. Okay. Yeah. William S. Joyner, 399th. Infantry Regiment Sergeant for heroic achievement in action during the period 7 December 1944 to 5 January 1945 in eastern France. As communication chief during this period in which his company attacked the enemy in the heavily wooded terrain east of Lemberg and other formidable defensive positions, Sergeant Joyner has bravely and energetically helped maintain continuous contact with battalion headquarters. Overcoming all handicaps of terrain and strong enemy action, he has skillfully directed the installation and repair of all wire lines, often exposing himself to intense hostile fire. And as a result of his leadership, his wire team has enabled the delivery of effective supporting fire for his rifle company. Entered military service from Kernersville, North Carolina. Subsequently, after his decoration, Sergeant Joyner wrote a letter to Jane, his sweetheart back home. All right. Now here's the composite letter from February and March 1945. <laughs> Dearest Jane, well, I was awarded the Bronze Star this week. I know they could have found thousands of fellows more deserving than I, but I don't suppose I will turn it down. I sent mom a copy of the order so you can probably get it from her to read if you are interested. <laughs> I received your last letter in fairly good time. I was sorry to hear of Walter's death in Belgium. I have tried to avoid being too serious in my letters to you, Jane, because I am inclined somewhat that way naturally, and unless I can write cheerfully, I don't write at all. But I feel that there are a few things I should say to you this once, and then we'll forget them. I don't have to tell you that war is an unpleasant business. By the grace of God, you have been spared seeing the totality of it, but from all that has been written and said, you know pretty well what it is. War is as ugly as the causes from which it results. In fact, seems to be the sum total of them. Yet it has its benefits, practical if not moral. War can, be, war can but be a great destructive force, however destructive to materiel, to ideals, and ultimately to personnel. In a task as tremendous as the one we are engaged in, there are inequalities of service, either from choice or chance. In my opinion, there are few equals to the degree of service rendered by the men of the infantry. These boys are great, Jane, with exceptions. 
just as the American heritage, with exceptions, is great. But ours is the greatest danger, and war is no respecter of persons. So darling, like all good soldiers, you must be prepared for any eventuality. I myself have been bereaved, and I know the suffering, largely silent and unseen, that it brings. I would not have you care for me less, but more than I would not have you hurt. Sorry, more than that I would not have you hurt. Believe me, I say this only because I love you so deeply. But the fortunes of war are not as haphazard as they might seem on the surface. It is my belief that God maintains the controlling hand in war as well as peace. His plan contains both good and bad, and I can accept the bad uncomplainingly, knowing the good that will follow will far overshadow the present evil. So let me ask you to believe with me that all will work together for good and that we will be reunited in the not too distant future. Till then, keep your chin up and a song in your heart. With all my love, William. P.S. Don't put too much stock in that Bronze Star thing. They give that to lots of guys, you know. <laughs> On March 15th, 1945, the 100th Division stormed and took the Maginot Line Citadel in the town of Bitchy, France. Sergeant Joyner became a certified card-carrying son of a bitchy. <laughs> Incidentally, in the, if you'll look at the signature on the bottom, it's signed by Roland Giddes, father of Bill Giddes, Davidson's Director of Media Relations, who is here with us today. Mr. Giddes, please wave for the people. The 100th Division pushed across the Rhine into Germany and encountered extreme last-ditch fighting by the Nazis, particularly in the city of Heilbronn. In the nearby town of Talheim, Sergeant Joyner earned the Oak Leaf Cluster for his Bronze Star. Bronze Star Oak Leaf Cluster Citation. Headquarters 100th Infantry Division, Office of the Commanding General, Citation Award of Bronze Star Metal Oak Leaf Cluster, William S. Joyner, Sergeant, 399th Infantry Regiment, for heroic achievement on 13th April 1945 in the vicinity of Talheim, Germany. During his company's attack near Talheim, Sergeant Joyner observed that his company commander and radio operator were immobilized from intense hostile fire. At great personal risk, he left the comparative safety of his position and moving into full view of the enemy and thus exposed to severe fire, directed a dev devastating volley of bullets into the German emplacements, enabling his commander and the radio oper operator to move from their entrapped position. Sergeant Joyner's heroic action served as an inspiration to his comrades and was within keeping of the finest military traditions of the Army of the United States, entered military service from Kernersville, North Carolina. And this next letter to his sweetheart after risking his life in Telheim on April 19th, Sergeant Joyner wrote, My dearest Jane, well, I finally found time to drop you a line. I've been quite busy, and it looks as if it's been that way for a while yet. Certainly, I wish I could be there to take in the junior senior prom with you. I still think you should go, even if I'm not around. It looks as if you'll miss out on lots of things if you wait for me. But someday we'll make up for these times we're missing. My love always, William. Germany surrendered May 8, 1945. And Sergeant Joyner reflected upon his life and wrote his sweetheart this poem. For you, I think of all the hours flown since last I saw you, held you tight, and kissed away your farewell tears. Yet I can't feel so long away, for you've been with me every day. I think of all the miles between us, half a continent besides, 2,000 miles of ocean deep, 
but I don't feel too far away, for you've been with me every day. I think of all the foreign folk that crowd around me every day, in this, an unfamiliar land, but I don't feel a stranger here, for you, at least, are always near. I think of all the years ahead, when I have settled down at home, and someone asks my dearest wish, I know right now what I will say, I want Jane with me every day. How long or short my life may be, I know inside I'll not regret my lot, nor wish to live it o'er, when comes my time to pass away, if you've been with me every day. WSJ. And so it came to pass that Sergeant Joyner returned home from war, and for the next 56 years had Jane by him every day. He returned to Davidson and graduated salutatorian of the class of 1948. Shortly thereafter, he married the girl next door. They settled. Hmm? They settled in Chapel Hill, where he served as a family doctor for 27 years. He served as chair of the town's human relations committee, defusing racial strife during, during desegregation. He served as a founding member, Sunday school teacher, and administrative board chair of Aldersgate United Methodist Church. He served as president of Chapel Hill Rotary Club. He served as board chair for the Wesley Foundation for Methodist Students at UNC. He served as caregiver to his beloved Jane for six years as she battled Parkinson's disease. In his address before D-Day, General Eisenhower told the soldiers they were about to embark upon a great crusade. Crusades need knights. Dida, you were a knight in that great crusade. You were Jane Linville's knight in shining armor, and you have been a knight for, for our whole family and every community that you have graced. Appropriately today, we celebrate that you are now a knight of the French Republic. So on behalf of your grandchildren, your children, and your entire extended family, I want to tell you that we honor you. We thank you and we are proud to be your living legacy, and we love you with all of our heart. I would now like to welcome to the podium Ms. Laura Meyer Wellman, Honorary Consul of France, together with our honoree. I don't know how to say that in French. Wow. This is an extraordinary occasion uh, for me to have this opportunity to see a sea of people here to honor someone so deserving and yet so representative of so many amazing men and women who served our country during World War II. My name is Laura Meyer Wellman, and I serve as Honorary Consul of France for the Charlotte region. And the gathering today and the work that has gone into it is going to find its way to the consulate in Atlanta and to the embassy in Washington as an example of how to do it right. So you all can say that you are part of that. My role today is to represent 
the Republic of France in sharing with you how very deeply the French people feel about the commitment and the incredible valor that was where lives were taken during a period of time where France would not have survived, was it not for the soldiers of the United States of America? The award that is being presented today is the highest distinction that France offers uh, to any foreigner anywhere in the world and it recognizes exceptional service to France and it, as a result of eminent military and civil merit. The Legion of Honor was created, as many of you may know, some two centuries ago by Emperor Napoleon I. And 2014 marks the 70th anniversary of D-Day. In France, there have been e enormous numbers of celebrations. There have been recognitions throughout the United States as this took place back in May of this year. Since taking over my responsibilities, I guess it was three years ago, just this summer, um, to become uh, honorary consul, I've had the opportunity to do this on a number of occasions. And this one really does win the prize. It's so rewarding, though, to have the chance to meet with the individuals and their families who have been so committed to making this happen. And in every situation, they are so personal. You can see on everyone's faces the care and the support that come in a family and a group of friends, such as those that are in this room. I'm so glad, by the way, that um, young people were included in this um, event. And this is something to celebrate from generation to generation. The fact that you have these wonderful uh, materials to share makes it even more special. And I know the amount of work that had to go in to do that. My thunder was stolen a bit by virtue of the citation of bravery. And I'm delighted that's the case, because obviously the stories of valor that Sergeant Joyner uh, uh, achieved in terms of um, the Bronze Star and uh, the commendations and some of the other special kinds of recognition are not given to everyone, despite his, his words. They are very special awards for very special actions. Mr. Joyner, could you move up here with me? I was looking for him. <laughs> <laughs> you illustrate, by your courage, the friendship and shared values that so pro profoundly bind our two nations. It's my immense pleasure this afternoon to honor you and I am now going to present you, uh, bestow upon you the Legion of Honor Award. Sergeant William Joyner, au nom du Président de la République de la France, je vous remets les insignes du Chevalier de l'Ordre National de la Légion d'Honneur. Merci. Not sure I recognize the gentleman that uh, the, all these people have been talking about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
But this is the day the Lord has made. So let us rejoice. And let us rejoice in it. To begin, I would like to express my appreciation to all of you who have made your way here to help us celebrate uh, the presentation of my French Legion of Honor Award from the good people of France, their highest national award. I have a long-standing affection for the French people, which began when I began to study their beautiful language with Professor J.R. Blackwell at Kernersville High School, and then later here at Davidson with Professor Gouldier. This affection was enhanced when I made acquaintance with so many French citizens on our sojourn from Marseille to Strasbourg during my army duty there in the fall and winter of 1944 and 1945. I'm pleased that my granddaughter, Johanna Alexander, now lives and works in France. And my grandson, Alec Jorna, whom you see on my left, will be going to Paris on the 18th of September. And he will teach English to French high schoolers in the Paris suburb of Massy. Now I'm especially indebted to Consul General Denise Barbet in the French consulate in Atlanta, which accepted my credentials and transmitted them to the appropriate office in Paris for their ratification. I would also like to thank Honorary Consul Laura Williams, Wil Williams, Wilman, Wilman, excuse me. Laura Wilman, Miss uh, Omega, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For coming today to participate in the event, and also Mr. Becker from the, uh, formerly from the office of uh, Congresswoman Sue Myron, who helped to facilitate the transmission of the uh, award. We elected to have this uh, ceremony uh, at Davidson College because of the long, long-term association of my family with the college. Eight members of my immediate family are Davidson alumni. It was here that I and my two brothers the late Captain Oscar Joyner, Jr., class of 1940, and Dr. Sam B. Joyner, who became associated with the U.S. Army as cadets in the Davidson ROTC Corps. My ROTC instructor in 1942 was Professor Sam Spencer, who has been mentioned before as a classmate of uh, my older brother, Oscar. And of course, Sam lately became a distinguished president of the college. <coughs> As was mentioned in the uh, telephone, my brother Oscar Jr. was a classmate of Sam. And as it mentioned, both were members of the first soccer team. Just this past summer, my grandson Oscar Jorna III a middle schooler in Charlotte attended tennis camp here on the campus, so the family association goes on. <laughs> Oscar Jr. is my older brother, was my role model throughout my boyhood. As an officer in the 4th Infantry Division headquarters, he was one of the, on the first landing craft to land on Utah Beach in Normandy at 6.15 a.m. that morning, the morning of D-Day. And he was killed four weeks later in the battle for Cherbourg and lies buried in the American Cemetery, which overlooks Omaha Beach. His name, of course, is listed in the memorial here on campus for the Davidson alumni who were killed in action. 
compared to his contribution toward the deliverance of France from the Nazi occupation, along with countless others who suffered the same fate and lost their lives. My contribution to the same goal was, of course, very modest. However, I did give it my best, best effort. I feel that I should share this award with, with uh, some very close members of our company, G, uh, who have supported me in every way along the battles in which we were engaged together in both southern and northeastern France from October 1944 to March 1945, at which time we moved on into Germany. Fortunately, my very best Company G buddy, Richard Welke, who lives in nearby Mooresville, was able to be present today with his daughter, Carolyn Underwood. Thanks for coming, Richard and Carolyn. He was the one in the picture with the pipe. <laughs> My thanks also to our Davidson friends and Charlotte friends and uh, the college officials here who assisted Matt in providing such a uh, nice place for us to meet. Finally, I must give proper credit to my son, Matthew Dorner, who assembled my credentials, uh, assisted by uh, his son, Matthew Jr., to my granddaughter, Johanna Alexander, who translated them into recognizable French. <laughs> <laughs> and to my daughter, Janie Caney, who hand delivered them to the Consul General in Atlanta. It was a family affair. <laughs> Thanks again to all of you who came. May God bless you. May God bless France. May God bless the United States of America. Excellent speech. Thank you, Dida. Please remain standing as the color guard retrieves the colors. Please remain standing as we welcome my great aunt, Marion Joyner Myers, to the podium for our benediction. When Matt asked me to give the benediction, 
He didn't ask me to say a few words because it's impossible for the joiners to say a few words. <laughs> but with many tears, and as I sat here today, I wanted to speak to William on behalf of Sam, his younger brother, and I, who remained at home, who never knew what our brothers were going through, but everyone in Kernersville was a part of the war effort. Even we, young ones, were doing our part, and as um, William's brother-in-law said today, he was collecting scrap metal. And I was going to the <clears throat> schoolhouse with mother to help the ladies roll bandages. And Sam was watching out for airplanes and reporting those. We were a part of a patriotic village who supported our wonderful soldiers in every way. And William, Sam, and I were so proud to have you and Oscar serve in our country. Thank you for both of us. Let us pray. <clears throat> Dear gracious, loving Heavenly Father, it is with great joy that we have gathered here today for this time of remembrance of our loved ones and especially to honor William for the sacrifice he made for all of us by leaving home, Davidson College, and his country to join in the fight to secure our freedom and the freedom of those under oppression in France and in Europe. Lord, we speak a blessing on the people of France who have not forgotten his sacrifice and for their gracious generosity in expressing their gratitude to him in such a special, tangible way by bestowing on him their legion of honor medal. Lord, we are thankful for the strong foundation of faith established by generations of our family, which gave William and Oscar strength and courage. And William, as a young soldier, he fought for the right and continued a full long life of service in the ministry of healing with humility, compassion, kindness, and love, blessing so many lives for so many years. Lord, as we leave this place today, May each of us follow William's example of servanthood with a renewed commitment to serve wholeheartedly in our own sphere of opportunity and sacrifice our lives for justice, mercy, the cause of freedom, and peace. For it is the name of our Lord Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen.